الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى علي وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, the most magnificent, the most merciful, tabarak wa ta'ala, to grant us all success fi dunya wal akhira, in this life as well as the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and protect us from our own evil souls. Ahabatif Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the Kitabihil Kareem Kullu nafsin da ikatul mot. Every soul will taste death. This is something that we're guaranteed. We're guaranteed to taste death. Meaning we will all be afflicted with the trial of death and leaving our loved ones and though and them leaving us no one's going to escape that everyone is guaranteed that we know this from the sunnah to law and we know this from the sunnah to hayat meaning the way of life and the way of Allah Allah's decree that he says it in, in the Quran and we know this this is what human history shows us that human beings, animals uh, all of the beasts insects, everything dies so everything and everyone will taste death with that being the case if we're truly cognizant with regards to that fact that we will taste death then we'll be fully cognizant of death we all believe that we all know that as Muslims and even most non-Muslim communities believe in death and many of them believe in some sort of afterlife so since we believe that, the next stage is to be cognizant of that, to be like aware, aware, meaning that this is something, this is a state that you're in. You're aware that death can touch you at any time and that we're all going to be, we're all going to perish. That would then of course entail that we begin to act. We begin to act and prepare ourselves for that full accounting and for which is Yomu Hisab, but for the event of death. And that isn't in the way that many people believe of just, you know, I've got to prepare my will, I've got to get my financial affairs together, I've got to get this and that. But no, it means the preparation. And the acknowledgement that your deeds are going to cease. So the preparation means that you're going to prepare for death. By doing what? وَعَمَلَ الصَّالِحَ And doing righteous deeds. So this is how you'll prepare. And as we've mentioned this hadith many, many times, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, in which the Prophet wasallam said, that when a person dies, his deeds cease except three. When a person dies, his deeds cease except three. Asadika Jariya. 
meaning the continuous charity. Al ilm yuntafa'bi, knowledge that the people benefit from or that is benefited from. Wa waladin salihin yad'uluhu, and a righteous child that supplicates for him after he's he or she has died. Ahabatifillah, this shows us and proves for us that our success comes by being cognizant of our demise, that we are going to die. And that means we begin to prepare for that death by doing righteous acts now. That we begin to make toba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we begin to do righteous deeds of charity. That we begin to follow the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah Azza wa Jal says, fi kitabihi al kirim wa ta'awana la biri wa taqwa wa la ta'awana la ithmi wa udwan. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, He tabaraka ta'ala says, and cooperate wa ta'awana la biri wa taqwa. You know, cooperate in piety and righteousness. Wa la ta'awana ala ithmi wa udwan. And do not cooperate in sinfulness and hatred. SubhanAllah. Every time we mention those ayat, it drives home so many important lessons when we reflect. Reflect upon the book of Allah Learn its explanation, its meaning from the Mufassireen, from Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, from the Mutaqaddimeen, from those people, in the, the, the classical scholars, and the more contemporary scholars, as long as their interpretation is in line with the Salaf of this Ummah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, He tells us that we must cooperate, because as we've talked about many times as well, Al-Amr yufid al-wujub, wa nahi yufid al-tahreem. That the origin of a command in the Quran and the Sunnah is that it shows that it's an obligation and the origin of a prohibition in the Quran and or the Sunnah shows that it's a, uh, that it's a prohibition, it's something Muharram. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the imperative form, وَتَعَوَّنُوا and cooperate, you know, this is in the imperative form, He's commanding you this. That shows us that it's an act of ibadah to do it, and it shows that it's an obligation to do it. Because it's not an obligation unless it's ibadah. So he's saying, وَتَعَوَنُوا ala biri wa taqwa And cooperate in righteousness and piety. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands you, as pious believers in Him, tabarak wa ta'ala, as mu'mineen, to cooperate together. We, we have to do that. That's not even really optional for us. We should be cooperating. We should be assisting one another. When someone in the community suffers, we should all arise to the occasion, really. But it is muqayyid. It is restricted. In that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَعَوَّنُوا ala بِرِّي وَتَقْوَى So that means you, when you're doing this cooperation, that it's on, it's in piety and righteousness. So, and we know that when we talk about uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِرِّي وَتَقْوَى بِرِّ encompasses everything good. Every kind of righteousness and good. And taqwa, ahabati fillah, as some of the salaf used to say, that taqwa Allah جل, is adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding the prohibitions. And some of them describe that taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually when you put a barrier between you and the hellfire. This is what the, the taqwa is. It's putting a barrier between you and the hellfire. So doing a righteous act is one means of putting a small barrier between you and Jahannam. And staying away 
and stopping yourself from doing a prohibition, something prohibited by Eliza Wajo, especially something you're cognizant of, this is putting a barrier between you and the hellfire. Then, in the second part of the ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Wala, wala ta'awanu ala ithmi wa'adwan. Do not, so again, it's a prohibition, showing it's, it's you, you better not do it. It's, it's, it's sinful to do it. Wala ta'awanu ala ithmi wa'adwan. Do not cooperate in sinfulness and hatred. So that means if you cooperate with others to do something destructive, to do something sinful, to do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates, to do something that hurts the believers, to do something that injures someone or, or destroys their honor, or you lie together, you deceive people together, you uh, cause ha havoc and wreak havoc together. You're a part of a group of mubtadiya, spreading bid'ah together. This harms the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It puts a tarnish, even though it doesn't actually harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor his deen, but it can harm the name of it in the eyes of the people. And it can deceive the people because it distorts the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and just think you t made ta'awun, you cooperate in bid'ah. You cooperated in sin. And you cooperated in enmity. Producing enmity. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished. He, Tabarak wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا وَلَا إِثْمِي So he said, do not cooperate in sin and enmity. We know the sin in and of itself can cause enmity. But he mentioned both. Don't cooperate in anything sinful. So don't get together and, and, and make zina. Don't get together and start a group of swingers. Don't get together and do uh, and lie together and feed each other. SubhanAllah, let, here, here, here's the latest statement of so-and-so. Hey, how can we distort it? How can we make a video of it? How can we threaten him with it? Okay, this is ta'awan ala ithim. So these people, ta'awan ala ithim, they've come together in sin. But what if they actually produce something that actually causes hatred. Perhaps they get a double sin because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned from both. Do not cooperate in sinfulness nor hatred. So the one who festers hatred between the Muslims. Or think about those people who spread lies about the ulama. The ulama who are the warath al-anbiya. They are the inheritors of the prophets. Alayhim afdal salatu wasalam. Then you have people, for example, takfiris and other mubtadiya, kutubists and others, who lie sometimes about the ulama because either from ignorance or they just want to deceive the people. They want the people to leave the minhaj al-haq to the minhaj al-batil. So what they will do is they will lie about them deliberately. Or they exaggerate things deliberately. And what does that do? They cause some people to be either be confused some people will either leave the scholars of truth and some people will just will even take it to another level and they will hate the scholars of truth because of what they what they heard not because of what they know what they heard so then the original sinner and spreader of lies and enmity gets the sin of, of enmity and perhaps they carry the sin for spreading enmity to the others that the others now hate the scholars and get sin so they get a, a, they can collect some sin from that. So see how dangerous it is. This is like a stern warning to us to be careful about how we speak, to care, be careful about this uh, important foundation of Islam, which is to come together on the truth, not just coming together. We're not coming together because we're going to march for Palestine. We're not coming together because we're going to, we really don't like, you know, Syrian refugees, this and, you know, not saying that those aren't good causes or the Black Lives Matter or something like this. We're not saying that those things aren't good in the, in the removal of oppression. But we're saying that these political ideologies that often back these movements, they don't fall under cooperating in, 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 in bitter with taqwa. And they don't, and, and on top of that, they also may fuel some enmity. 
Because if you ta'awun with people of disbelief that hate Islam, for example, or they promote uh, muharramat, and you're right under the banner with them, well, you're going to cause the people of the Sunnah to be displeased with what you're doing. You're going to cause enmity between the Muslims over the cause of disbelief or the cause of ta'awun with disbelievers. So this is very important. All of these Messiah, they have, they have a relationship and fall under this, this verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's all relevant that we want to be careful about spreading hatred. That's a stern warning to all of us because we don't know you know, how our scale, you know, how our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala may see what we're doing. Sometimes we think we're doing khair. That's why I don't really like to speak about people, and I have done it. I don't regret it, but I regret any time, any dhulm that I've done. And to be excessive. So that means there's no need to speak about certain innovators every time and every day. Why? Because if there is no maslaha, I've already made a refutation. But if I constantly have on my tongue so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, so perhaps they're going to get some of the few good deeds that I have. And per, or because my deeds are so short, they're going to get rid of some of their sins and I'm going to carry it. So this is why I advise you and myself to be very cautious with the tongue. As the Messenger wasallam said, that that is uh, one of the things that will get you thrown into your face uh, in the hellfire. Ahabatifillah, we began this talking about death and we'll end in the same light in that we want to be reminded to do good while we're in this life. And as the Salaf used to say, that a dunya dar al amal wal akhira dar jaza. This life is the time for deeds, meaning it's the time for good deeds, you know, because obviously we want to do good. And the Akhirah is the time to reap the, uh, to sow what you reap, or to reap what you sow. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be a source of khair and not a source of sharr. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins and shortcomings. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.